Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have indefinite integral of x plus 7 squared times tan inverse of x plus 4x minus 22 times x plus 7, all divided by x squared plus 1 times x plus 7 quantity squared. dx. Let's never forget to say the dx. I don't know if I said it. Um, so just as a heads up, it looks a lot worse than it really is. It's quite fun to solve. And you start off using a similar approach that I did for the most recent integral of the day. I'm going to split this into two right off the bat. I'm going to group x plus 7 squared tan inverse of x over the denominator. And then these terms here, well, it's kind of one term technically, over the denominator. So let's jump right into that. And I'm doing that because notice like... Um, I could factor out x plus 7 from the numerator if I wanted, but since this has x plus 7 squared, I'd much rather just keep this first term over the denominator separately and be able to cancel it all. And I'm so excited. Look at this tan inverse of x and x squared plus 1. I feel good things brewing. So let's write this first as x plus 7 squared tan inverse of x over x squared plus 1 x plus 7 squared dx, that'll be integral number 1, and then the second one that we'll tackle, 4x minus 22 times x plus 7 over x squared plus 1 times x plus 7 squared dx, okay? All right, so this is integral number 1, and then this will be integral number 2. So integral number 1, notice... Right off the bat, we can just cancel out x plus 7 quantity squared. So we're just left with integral tan inverse of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Oh, lovely, lovely. Hopefully you recognize this is the perfect place to use a u sub. So we're going to let u equal tan inverse of x. And then du, its derivative would be 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, which is sitting right here waiting for us. So now we have integral. That's it, just u du. Oh, how sweetly that cleaned up. So antiderivative is going to be 1 half u squared. I'm going to put plus c1. I want to save plain old plus c for the very end, the grand finale. We're not there yet. So this is 1 half u was tan inverse of x, all of that squared plus c1. So there's my first integral done. Oh, so painless, so lovely. Okay, let's focus our attention now to the second one. Again, notice we can cancel out one factor of x plus 7, but I'm still left with 1 in the denominator. That's not so bad, though. That's not so bad. I'll take it. So here, now my second integral has simplified to simply 4x minus 22 over x squared plus 1 times x plus 7 dx. So certainly, yes, this is the time. Let's find the partial fraction decomposition of the integrand. So we have 4x minus 22 over, everything's fully factored in the denominator. x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic. So that means the decomposition will have the form ax plus b over x squared plus 1, and then just a constant c over that linear factor x plus 7. All right, lovely. Now let's multiply through by the LCD, which is x squared plus 1 and x plus 7. And then we have 4x minus 22 equals, this will be ax plus b times x plus 7 plus c times x squared plus 1. And then I'm just going to multiply everything out. I could plug in um, negative 7 for x and solve for one of the constants. But honestly, at this point, since we have to do uh, multiplying out for the other two, we might as well. So 4x minus 22 is going to be ax squared plus 7ax plus bx plus 7b plus cx squared plus c. Beautiful. So now let's equate the coefficients of like terms. So x squared, that's the highest degree term we have in this whole equation here. I see no x squareds on the left, and I have an ax squared and a cx squared on the right, so 0 must equal a plus c. Moving down the line, x to the first, I have 4x to the first 
on the left, and I have 7ax plus bx. Those are all to the first, so 4 must equal 7a plus b. And then x to the 0, my constant term, we have negative 22, which must equal 7b plus c. Perfect. Okay, so from here, what can we see? Well, a is equal to negative c. Let me sub that into this second equation. So then we have 4 equals negative 7c plus b. And then I still have this equation. I'm just going to leave it as is. Negative 22 equals 7b plus c. So now I have a system of equations with just c and b. Let's multiply this one by negative 7. So then now it's negative 28 equals 49c minus 7b. And I'll add it to the equation directly above. Add those together. So then now we'll have negative 50 equals, and then here's the loveliness, these cancel, 50C. So C is negative 1. And then since A is negative C from here, don't forget that, then A is positive 1. And then just take a quick peek over here. If A is 1, 4 plus 7 is B, so then we know B is negative 3. That's it. So we got that done. You know what's so lovely? <laughs> so many of my students who were in differential equations this last semester had already taken linear. And when they were doing partial fraction decomposition, they'd often just set up a, a matrix <laughs> for the system and solve it so quickly. It was wonderful. They were just such a lovely group of students. Okay, so we have AX plus B, so that would be X minus 3 over X squared plus 1 plus C, so minus 1 over x plus 7 dx. Okay, now how to tackle this guy? Well, this term here, we're actually going to split into two. I'll put x over the denominator and the constant separately. You'll see why in just a second. So we have x over x squared plus 1 minus 3 over x squared plus 1 minus 1 over x plus 7 dx. Now from here, if you really want, unless, um, you can make a substitution. We already did a u sub, so you could just say let's let t be x squared plus 1, and then dt is 2x dx, so 1 half dt is x dx. Since I just have an x that I'm already imagining, I'm going to pick up a 1 half. I'm not going to really do the full substitution. I know in the end, I would have just had a t down here, and the antiderivative would be ln absolute value of t. I would just have to add a 1 half in my answer. So I'm going to just jump straight to that. 1 half ln. You could put absolute value, x squared plus 1. That's what t would have been. But then if you think about it, this is never negative. So these can just be parentheses. They don't need to stay absolute value bars. Okay, just always be aware. Don't be sloppy. And then here we go. We have 3 over x squared plus 1. Well, that's just going to be 3 times tan inverse of x. Beautiful. 3 tan inverse of x minus, and then last one would be ln absolute value. In this case, I can't drop them because I have no guarantee that x plus 7 is positive. Plus c2, right? Because this is the result from the second integral. So now we have at long last... Always throw a little narrative in there. It makes your work so lovely. From the first integral, 1 half tan inverse of x squared plus all of this, 1 half ln x squared plus 1. Now, always be on the lookout. Is there something we could simplify? Anything? Do I want to combine the logarithms? Not really. I say let's stop. Plus c, and then now you tell the people, who is this lovely c? It's C1 plus C2 from earlier. Oh, beautiful. Let's box this with pride. Job well done. Very lovely. Okay, so that concludes your latest integral of the day. Did you get it right? Did you do it a wee bit differently? I would love to hear. Comment down below. Also, you know what I would not, I'd like to know? I don't want to skip too many steps, but... Do you guys, are most of you writing out this substitution when you evaluate antiderivatives like this? Or are you just able to do it in your head? I don't want to bore you all, 
But at the same time, I don't want to skip steps if you're really trying to improve your integration techniques and I'm going too aggressively fast. So kind of let me know where you're at, those of you who are watching this playlist right now. All right, that's it. If you need to review any of your integration techniques, then head over to the video lectures on my playlist. You know, one thing I can't emphasize enough is how important partial fraction decomposition is. Um, you use it so much for integrating in Calc 2, so much in differential equations, not just integrating, but when you're trying to find inverse Laplace transform. Oh my goodness. So if I had advice to anybody who's, you know, in the middle of studying their math courses, please get your partial fraction decomposition under control. Okay, that's it. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. I love you guys so much. I'll be back soon. Bye.